Hello, South Bay Soaring Society. I wanted to present uh, today how to repair DLG planes. And I'd like to think I'm an expert because I built a, a carbon fiber DLG plane from scratch, which you can see on our YouTube channel. But um, I'm really an expert from uh, the School of Hard Knocks, which started with a twister that was stuck in a tree for an entire year. And then I bought it off uh, my friend Greg uh, and used the fuselage to attach to my Predator uh, two wings. Um, and then I promptly flew the Franken plane that I had created through a cyclone fence and ripped off the wings. So I learned how to repair wings from that experience, among other things. But uh, I wanted to get show you how I'm now repairing uh, uh, wings in the current. Here we go. <laughs> um, this is um, uh, my my current plane, which is a CX5 Concept X5, and I've just loved it. Uh, you can see the custom graphics that my son designed on here, and I, I'm really big on um, black. Uh, black bottoms on the wings, but, but I, I feel like you can really see graphic symbols on there, so I put two big X's on the wings. So this is the, the, the concept uh, X5 that I fly, and um, I've had a few bumps and bruises with this one. You'd think I would learn after probably my sixth plane. Um, this one came about a year ago when I was flying at uh, Rancho San Antonio, and um, they have a really low fence, just, just uh, you know, mid-calf level. Um, um, kind of a ranch style little fence to to separate the end of the flying field and being clever I thought I could just fly in fairly quickly and then just do a little pop up and then come come right into my landing spot um, and of course I caught the tail on the uh, little pop up on the on the one foot high fence so uh, it took a nice chunk out of the tail um, I'm proud of this repair because you can see the workmanship here. Uh, I put a foam plug in there and then used some very light uh, unidirectional um, carbon to repair it. And here's the finished product. Pretty sweet, huh? And I don't think I added much weight. I, I usually forget to weigh the plane uh, before I repair it, but um, I usually uh, just really go light. In fact, the, the last repair I'll talk about is one where I didn't go light, uh, went too light and um, had some problems. But anyway, that was a nice repair. This was the super tricky repair, which um, when I bumped the fin, <laughs> I also broke it off. <laughs> and uh, it was on a kind of a nib kind of thing, um, which was just uh, uh, the, the end of the fuselage. And I ended up, I just wrapped my head around this and tried a few trials and error. Um, one is I, I wrapped around the, the, um, the fuselage and then pulled it off and waxed it and pulled it off and clipped it and then made it smaller, used it as kind of a makeshift foot plug, but that didn't work. So I actually molded my own plug, um, made a, made a core out of a, um, um, sort of balsa wood wax that waxed it then put uh, material in it anyway it was a very complicated thing <laughs> probably put uh, 20 man hours into it uh, if you need to find out how to do that <laughs> ask me but I tried about three different ways uh, this is the repair though I'm pretty proud of it the, the whole thing was mostly done inside uh, inside the fuse and inside that little plug so it uh, it was a real clean repair when it was done. I forgot to weigh that one as well. <laughs> so this is my recent one. And I mentioned that I try to always repair super light and often, well, not often, but I do have double repairs on the same spot, which I guess philosophically means you're, you're working right on the edge, which you probably should, especially towards the end of the, t of the uh, fuselage. Um, but this one was a crack actually on a spot that I had repaired twice before and I used super those super light thin monocoat uh, monodirectional carbon that you saw in my first fin repair and it's just too light so I use a, a heavier um, gosh it's probably uh, one ounce or 0.7 ounce um, monocarbon fiber with a little thread that kind of keeps them all lined up in the same direction actually you'll see a picture of it but this was a crack so the third crack I said I, I needed to uh, definitely get more serious about this one 
Um, and this is that monodirectional uh, carbon I talked about, and the, you can see the fine threads that hold it together. Now, this is my uh, patented technique. Um, there, there's a hundred ways to do this, but none of them seem to work. The one that everyone talks about is UCA, kind of glue it together and get the right uh, orientation before you even try to fiberglass it. And for whatever reason, I am just the worst CA per person in the world. So I just, and I don't really trust it even when it works. Um, but what I do instead is I, um, I do a, this is a, like a one inch or three quarter inch um, strip that I actually fiberglass on um, to, to be, to act like CA, <laughs> sort of a little uh, patch. I've, other people have taken a stick and kind of glued it there to make a, uh, with CA to make it, it, it hold temporarily in place. But somehow you need to get the fuse to kind of be relatively where it should be. And this is what it looked like when it was all um, wetted up with resin. There's some resin in the background. And um, uh, this is polyply, which is just a fancy name for polyester, which I think you can just buy at any dress shop. But um, I, I think I've spent a little bit extra to get the polyply brand or whatever. And I cut it in, on a bias to make strips, and I uh, wrap it around my uh, my sort of wet <laughs> uh, job and um, tape it with a lot of blue tape. And then I also wrap it with um, uh, with uh, paper towel, and then use kind of a stretchy electrical tape to wrap around the paper towel. So it's like a really tight uh, sock around it, and um, and that, and then I let it cure. Um, oh, and, and so that is still kind of wobbly at that point. And this is my other tricky thing, um, is I, um, use books and, and levels, uh, no funny from this view, they don't really look <laughs> level, but they both should be level and, and lined up with each other. Um, and I just very carefully make a kind of a little bed for this whole thing to set up because it, it does wobble a bit when it's first, when the first piece goes in. And, uh, but this is a way to get it lined up visually. Um, and I continue this even on the, on the fin and on the um, stab stabilizer, stabilizer, stabilizer. And uh, I use a several levels to do that. Use, uh, these are rolls of pennies that I use as little weights. And so the whole thing is lined up. And when, it, when it's finished, I get, there's my patch on the, the lower part. And there's the, uh, the, the part that's still cracked. So I got half of it locked in. And I guess you could make a one shot deal with the, um, um, with wrapping the whole thing at once, but, um, I just felt better about kind of lining this up first. Um, so then I put another, I basically repeated it, but with a wider, uh, piece of monocoat and then wrapped it with fiberglass. Um, that's a, probably a point point seven ounce fiberglass. Um, and didn't wrap it much, you know, just like one wrap. Um, and I was pretty happy with this. Uh, you can see there's a little divot kind of on the lower lower side. Um, and uh, so I decided to give it some more um, finishing work. I used um, uh, this blue uh, uh, foam. It's, it, it's, um, it's a resin-based thing. So you mix the blue with the white and it gets a light filler. Excuse me, it's a filler is what it's called. And I um, filled it and then sanded it down and um, and this was the result. It kind of I kept you know checking it. <laughs> the nose needs some work, but uh, but I, I felt pretty good about the fuse. Um, here's a close up of the repair. Uh, so it's on the upper right is where the um, you can kind of make out that there's some blue filler there. And I use Sharpie, my favorite uh, f finishing tool. <laughs> to uh, I use Sharpie and then rub it with paper towel so it doesn't come off on your hand so much. Uh, and, uh, and that's the repair. I think I have another picture of it, uh, a little out of focus, but that's, that's the repair from a different orientation. So it's not perfect. You can see there's a bit of a bump there. Um, but, um, but I'm happy with the repair. Uh, so I'm f once again, flying my, uh, CX-5 and I forgot to weigh it again <laughs> for this repair, but, um, I, I think the point too, to, to, uh, make is I'm going to buy an extra fuse now. <laughs> I hope it's going to cost me about $100 on RC groups, and it'll be a it'll be a money well spent after about four repairs on this uh, this fuse. I think it's getting to its life its end of life, and also the nose is looking pretty.
pretty beat up. So it's time maybe to the next repair, I might have to swap in the servos and just do and do a whole new thing, which will take some time too, but it'll probably be lighter and um, be worth it. Um, so that's what I wanted to tell you. That's our uh, little lesson on how to do DLG repairs. And uh, definitely we'll continue the conversation uh, during our Zoom meeting following. Thanks so much.